The chapter's motto was emblazoned across the fronts of their tanks and gunships. It decorated their banners. It adorned plates of exotic red metals tens of feet high, bolted to the hulls of their void ships. Their foes had learned to dread those words. To hear them shouted by a hundred Vox-amplified voices was to know the end was nigh. Rebellious worlds had been pacified by that slogan alone. Broadcast to the sound of trumpets and the songs of victorious angels, it stilled wrath. It broke rebellion. It routed Xenos. The Red Wings were placable in victory, imperturbable in defeat. They were space marines, born of the line of the Archangel of Baal, most perfect and sublime of all the Emperor's sons. They were the angels of death, and they knew no fear. The Red Wings are a Blood Angel successor chapter most prominently featured in the novel Astarath, Angel of Mercy. They are a peculiar chapter when it comes to Sons of the Angel, their most distinct feature being their armor. While many Blood Angel successors sport red, black, gold, or white armor, the Red Wings march into battle clad in blue-white armor described as Arctic Snow. This pale armor accentuates their left pauldron, elbow guard, and knee pad, all forged in an exotic metal of a deep ruby color. The Red Wings, which happen to share their name with one of my favorite weapon designs in the Monster Hunter series, by the way, are fairly obscure outside of the few novels they appear in. In the novel Red Fury, they assist the Blood Angels and their cousins in the defense of Sanguinius' golden sarcophagus, when the Fabius Bile unleashes, like, mutated Astartes vampire clones on Baal. Their dreadnoughts were also noted in the novel Devastation of Baal for their enthusiastic gun line against the Tyranids. As the defensive line crumbled, Chapter Master Dante ordered the Dreadnoughts and their squad to retreat and regroup, which they voice a begrudging disdain to as they follow orders. In Astarath, Angel of Mercy, the Red Wings were deployed on the swamp planet of Dulcis on a mission to liberate the planet from an enslaver incursion. During this mission, however, their captain was murdered when one of their lieutenants fell to the Black Rage. The Red Wings were mostly Primaris Marines after the devastation of Baal, so with their firstborn captain dead, no one was alive to explain the gene seed flaw to them. Only when the Red Wings were reinforced by Astarath and a force of Blood Angels was the nature of their gene flaw revealed to the chapter at large. You'd figure that having such a spotlight with an important Blood Angels character would mean that at least somebody on the internet had at least painted like at least one mini, either for a display or a kill team or, you know, anything. But when you search for the Red Wings in Google Images or Instagram, no miniature of this chapter appears. Well, uh, they're okay, there's like this one Death Watch termy, but like, it doesn't really do them justice. You, you put them in Death Watch Black, you know, that doesn't really show off their armor. I've always wondered why, like, I mean, they show up in three Blood Angels books, but they don't have, like, any miniature representation for it on the internet. So, I once again take upon the obscure slash forgotten lore mantle once again to be the first person, hopefully, to make a miniature for these Sons of the Angel for the internet to see. For the base of this model, I'm using the Primaris Lieutenant from the Indominus box that I've been saving for reasons unknown, honestly. When making one of these models for chapters, I normally try to aim for a basic, like, gun line, battle brother dude, but we're gonna mix it up, mainly on a whim. This Red Wing will match this model's rank, so we're aiming for a Red Wing's Lieutenant today. Little did I know that this would complicate painting down the line, but hey, that's spoilers. While I like the general adornments on this mini, I wanted to fix the one part I didn't like for my blade guard, which is the part of the tabard that covers the stomach area. I don't know why GW thought this looked good at any point, but I wanted to test fixing it for any future blade guard models. Seriously, you put on armor, then the tabard, then the rest of your armor? What? Anyways, I drilled a small pilot hole for my Dremel to reach in and carve out the majority of the stomach tabard. In retrospect, a few extra holes would have helped, and maybe a different bit, honestly. The plastic kept melting and clogging up the carving bit, so I had to scrape it off with a knife. Even with the clogged bit, it was still easy to take care of. The next thing I did was stuff the inside with some styrene offcuts. When this is super glued in, it'll give the back of the sculpting area enough support for me to confidently do green stuff work. This mini conversion was a nice test piece since the actual sculpting was fairly easy, yet I did learn something. Uh, I needed to add a bit more depth to properly recreate the top plate overlapping the bottom stomach plate. As it is currently, it's a little flat, but hey, it'll be good to know for next time. 
I picked out a right arm for the model, a spare plasma pistol prosthetic arm for the monopose uh, assault intercessor sprues. I trimmed and sand the arm down to accept a new pauldron, then trimmed the shoulder to get the angle I wanted for the arm. From here I began dumping out my assorted bits boxes looking for a good pauldron. These two little containers have a bunch of pauldrons in them, but they're mainly blanks from old kits or leftover death watch pads. Uh, I then remember that I have some nice pauldrons on the Vanguard Veteran Sprues and have a crisis of faith. So, will it be Bachelorette number one, Bachelorette number two, or Bachelorette number three? Okay, okay! In the choice between small and large eagle pauldron, I settle for the small one, which actually turned out to be a good idea since the large one would have bumped against the forearm of the right arm, which is angled at 90 degrees. Now that I actually have a pauldron picked, I can place the right arm onto the model. A little bit of super glue and then some green stuff is used to recreate the uh, armor joint. Then the pauldron slapped on with a little bit of green stuff and super glue. I like to shove green stuff under my pauldrons with arm mods like this, since the pauldron might not sometimes sit flush with the arm securely and the little chunk of green stuff and super glue keeps everything nice and secure. Next was the left arm, which was pretty simple. I used another assault intercessor bit, as it was the exact bit I was looking for, an outstretched arm with a chain sword. As I was trimming off the pauldron, I took care not to damage the elbow armor, you know, due to the significance of the paint job. I wondered if changing the arm would be more beneficial to the display of the Red Wing's signature paint job, uh, but I decided I liked the gun up, sword down pose too much to alter the plans, which were uh, admittedly a bit more impromptu than expected. Nevertheless, the shoulder joint was trimmed to get the angle I wanted and green stuffed the rest. I initially placed the pauldron with a little wing decoration on it, but realized it made the surface much smaller for heraldry, so I swapped it out for a regular blank one. Now the head. The Red Wings are a mostly Primaris chapter, so I wanted to keep the Mark 10 armor theme strong here. I have this Mark 7 head bit left over, and I wanted to place its head ornament onto a Mark 10 helmet. To minimize damage to the bit, I changed my blade out, which is admittedly very old, for a fresh one here to ensure the cleanest cut, leaving me with a Blood Angel's head crest to place on the head, and a lightly scuffed Mark 7 helmet for future use. I attached the crest to the Mark 10 helmet with some plastic glue and placed a small ball of green stuff on the bottom of the neck. I like adding this green stuff joint to the head as it allows me to get a more expressive head in my posing as by default a Space Marine's head bit can't really get a good down tilt expression. I did decide to change the direction of the head and uh, whenever I settled on this second uh, pose I did end up securing everything together with super glue. With that, the building is done and we can talk about the paint job. According to the wiki, the description of the Red Wings color scheme can be found in the novel Astarath, Angel of Mercy. I couldn't find a copy on the uh, high seas and I didn't want to spend 13 bucks on the ebook, especially when I'm only going to be reading like a couple sentences, so we'll have to make do with a cursory glance. I know we might be missing some details, but I mean, come on guys, it's 13 bucks. I'm not going to waste money on a book I'm not going to be fucking reading. Like, it, there's no sense in that. I'm not doing <clears throat> Alright, the uh, search bar here says page 8. Their armor was the blue-white of Arctic snow. Upon the right-hand shoulder guard, the chapter badge, a wing tipped with a reaching talon, was rendered in blood red. Lacquered ruby colored their left pauldrons, pullions, and cold ears. Gold they bore in small amounts, the majority of their decoration and battle honors presented in black and silver. Wow, I hope I pronounced those, uh, those words right. So this here is a Space Marine color template that I found on, I don't know, Google in like two seconds or some shit. But right now it's filled in with the bare minimum of the Red Wings armor description. You can see that we've got a Arctic snow white color here and the ruby on the three uh, explicitly stated pauldron, elbow guard, and left uh, knee plate. Unfortunately, that leaves us a lot of blanks in the armor description, um, like any kind of cloth bits, the chest, Imperialis, uh, or Aquila, whichever one. I don't remember which one's what. Uh, the eye color. So basically, we're going to have to take some creative liberties here. 
the very first thing I want to do is bring the ruby onto whichever chess symbol happens to be the correct one. Okay, Google says the same thing. Okay, but yeah, I want to bring the ruby onto the wings on the chest. Not only does this fill out the chest area more, but if you have a chapter called the red wings and you've got wings on your armor, I feel like you would do a disservice of having the main display one not red. The next thing I'm going to opt for are silver pauldron edges, or like the pauldron banding, I guess. You know, pretty standard stuff there. A lot of Space Marine chapters usually have gold or silver up on that area, so I don't think it stands out too badly. Um, a lot of the trinket descriptions that the book gives us say they wear a lot of silver anyways, uh, although I read the description after I painted the model, so my lieutenant's wearing a little bit more gold than you normally would, but you know, he's a lieutenant, so I think that's kind of okay. The next detail is going to be the eyes, which I'm going to opt for a cooler dark green. Not too dark, I guess like a standard green. The Blood Angels have green eyes um, and green plasma, and a lot of the times for Space Marines, their eye colors are colors that you don't see anywhere else on a model, unless it's for like a tertiary color, like if you look at the standard Ultramarines, you've got blue and gold, or blue and yellow, I guess, depending on your edition. And they've got red eyes, and you don't see red on any other part of their armor, except when it comes to, like, little ropes and capes and stuff. So, I think a green here doesn't stick out too badly, and it does contrast, technically, with the ruby. So, I'm confident in that decision. So, this is the baseline of what I feel like a regular green wing battle brother would look like. Obviously, you change the color scheme up depending on how codex compliant you want to be, but I don't give a fuck about the codex right now, so this is what I'm going to say is a baseline, regular ass, battle line dude. But unfortunately, we're painting the lieutenant, which I did say complicated things, so let's start complicating things. You'll see here that I've moved the silver onto the arm and the top of the Mark X knee guards. Uh, it's on the arm because he has a prosthetic arm, uh, he might have lost it in a battle somewhere. And I've brought the silver down onto the knees to kind of evenly distribute it down into a uh, a lower section of the armor. Plus on our lieutenant, the, he has a skull, an ornate skull on his left um, knee plate. And I figured having the entire thing ruby would look kind of weird. So I put the silver crest on top of it and the skull to kind of ornament or accent it. Which means that I brought the color over to the right knee pad just to keep things uh, symmetrical. I realize this is a very asymmetrical design, but I feel like, you know, you have to kind of balance the asymmetry with the symmetry, and whenever, you know, it's kind of even, it looks a little better in my brain for reasons I cannot explain. And the last alteration we're going to be making here is the right pauldron. Uh, it's going to be all gold, um, mainly because of that uh, eagle shoulder pad I picked out earlier. I feel like gold clashes a little bit with the uh, overall coolness of the color scheme, but it does match the red a little bit in terms of color warmth. Although the red is cooled down a bit by the black that I use on it later, uh, the gold I'm going to be washing with a blue, which makes it a little less saturated, a little washed out, and a little cooler, which I feel still does the overall temperature of the color uh, justice. Um, plus, like I said, for the, the umpteenth time, he's a lieutenant. We gotta make some compromises here. And I feel like if someone were to do an army of these guys, uh, having gold up there would let them easily find that mini on the table. Like, oh, there's my lieutenant. You know, he's the guy with the little gold bit. So, once again, I think this is a... Um, justifiable exception uh, for his rank. Alright, game plan is set, just a matter of getting it done. I started with a white primer since the paint job would be predominantly white anyways. Getting that white was a challenge however. I didn't have a bottle of icy arctic blue laying around so I mixed white with like a single molecule of a flat blue and even then I still had to experiment with it. Getting the right white that didn't just look like a very pastel blue I got something adjacent to acceptable and base coated the whole model with it. I then panel lined the whole model with Drakenhof Nightshade, 
uh, a dark blue wash. Part of me wonders if it had been easier to just paint white and then shade the whole thing with diluted blue to simultaneously tint the white and wash the recesses, but given that this was a one-off model, I didn't mind going the hard route for once. You know, it helps keep your, uh, keep your skills sharp, you know? After cleaning up the armor from the panel lining stage, I mix some more white into the armor color and proceed to lay on some thick highlights on the most prominent edges of the armor. When combined with the more focused edged highlight of pure white afterwards, I'm hoping this will make the armor read as, you know, their signature Arctic Snow Power Armor. Uh, the keyword is hopefully. I've been staring at my mini long enough for it to not even look real anymore. It still looks a little too blue to me, but it doesn't look blue at all on my camera. So I, I don't know guys, I'm just gonna have to tough it out. After the armor, I fill in all of the black and metallic silver areas with a dark gray. Although I do take a quick detour to set up some hazard stripes on the chainsword. Uh, hazard stripes are a big part of the classic Warhammer aesthetic in my brain, so I wanted some yellow hazards on the model to really channel that uh, second edition Blood Angels versus Orc energy. When it comes to hazard stripes, I usually opt to paint on a bright yellow, then sketch the lines with a pencil before I paint the stripes on. I'm not too concerned about being exact on this project either, so I just wing it. You could say I red wing, red wong, winged it? Red winged it. That doesn't make sense either. When the dark gray slash black areas are done, I move to the silvers. I use a bright metallic silver on all the non-gold metal bits here, which includes the portions of the armor which will eventually be ruby, since I want to use a contrast paint to get the effect. I did forget to film it, but I shaded all these metal and dark gray bits with the same diluted blue wash that I used on the armor. Not only does this give a unifying color to all of the colors on the mini, but also further reinforces the cold color palette. Afterwards, I move to the ruby bits, glazing a thin down dark red contrast paint over the silver, this one in particular being Flesh Terror's red. I also use some Army Painter Dark Tone to accentuate the bottoms of the jeweled areas and help get that depth that gems have. So now we move to the chapter symbol, and here's the most controversial part of the whole project. In our official description of the Red Wings, their chapter badge is described as a wing tipped with a reaching talon rendered in blood red. Alright, so we just have to freehand that, right? Well, this is uh, where I choose to deviate things a little bit. Um, instead of making and freehanding the Red Wing symbol, I instead opted to steal the super recognizable Ravenwing symbol for the army. Now let me explain. The Ravenwing's signature wing holding a sword symbol is badass, and the only people who use it, as far as I can tell, are the Dark Angels. While the Astarath novel does explicitly describe the heraldry, I'm sacrificing a bit of accuracy here for the sake of accessibility. The Blood Angel's successor heraldry aesthetic uh, revolves around a lot of swords, wings, goblets, and blood drops. So a symbol with a wing and a sword in it definitely fits the criteria. And there is precedence for Space Marine chapters to share heraldry. Using the heraldry from a prolific group like the Raven Wing also means that other people looking to collect red wings can utilize the myriad of 3D printed accessories and transfer sheets for the Raven Wings for their own models, which, as I said, makes it a bit more accessible as well. I realize that while I give spotlight to obscure uh, bits of lore, I realize that sometimes these things are not easily duplicated by the average painter. And a lot of the times I say, you know, hey, tough shit. I had to do the Disciples of Caliban, so you do too. But, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be a little bit more mindful to the average, uh, average Joe. Normally, I would beat myself up for this lack of lore accuracy. Um, but I think this is for the better in general. Uh, maybe if you had access to, like, Emperor's Children transfers or bits, their symbol might be a little more accurate depending on the, the, the like, the, the, the talony bit. But yeah, I, I fully recognize that it's not 100% lore accurate. Hey guys, it's me, your boy, in editing. Um, it's come to my attention after the entire project is over and I'm like a couple days into editing that the uh, the Death Watch Veterans box comes with a single pauldron for the uh, the Brazen Claws. 
which would have been nice to know uh, a couple days ago, considering the fact that I have one, and it's been sitting in my box. In fact, it was the box I opened earlier in the video. Doing a quick search around, I've uh, also found an STL for all you 3D printers out there. Um, I will link it down in the description so you can opt to use that instead of what I did with the decal. Given that I've already finished the model, I'm not going to go back and redo it, but if I happen to do another Red Wing in the future, I've got this little bit I can use. And for anyone looking to start a Red Wing army, on the off chance that you do, there's an STL down there that you can use. Okay, uh, yeah, that's it. Speaking of lore inaccuracies, take note that the ornate eagle pauldron on the lieutenant's right arm forced me to move the symbol to the left pauldron, um, meaning that not only could I not use blood red, otherwise it would just blend into the ruby, but the transfer I was using was white, and the white symbol on the ruby background looks really good in my opinion, and I think it's a semi-decent compromise. Obviously, this wouldn't apply to the whole army, but uh, I think it will do for in the case of HQ units. With the pauldron and the other ruby bits completed, I turned to the tilt shield where I opt for more hazards on a whim. Uh, not only does this distribute the yellow over more of the model, but again, love me some hazard stripes, baby. I then got to remove the head from its paperclip holder and snap the crest off. No big deal. Uh, just a little plastic glue in there and it's good as new. I then use a little super glue to glue the head in the new angle that I chose, allowing you to see their signature ruby colors from the model's primary viewing angle. As a final touch, I break out a venerable paint pot out of cryostasis. Here's GW's old green glaze, Waywatcher Green, which I throw over the plasma coils and the eyes. The Blood Angels have green eyes and green plasma coils, so I figured it was another nice way of tying them into their parent chapter. Although I did opt for a cooler green, so it doesn't get too neon green yellowy. And there we go, the Marine is done. Now let's scrap up a base. This is a failed base for my Chaos Army. I'm going to tear off the plastic card I stuck on and reuse this base for a spaceship interior base. The Red Wings employ an unorthodox organization, their fortress monastery being five void castles called the Pentagard. Having the Red Wings and their armory split between five void castles allows an even distribution across a larger area, enabling them to quickly respond to threats in their territory. Splitting the chapter into sections also helped them recover quickly after the devastation of Ball. When I got to this point though, I had a thought. A blue-white Blood Angels successor that operates out of a space vessel. That sounds eerily familiar to my kill team, the Angels Lament, that I had made about a year ago. Given that I had made the Angels Lament without prior knowledge of the Red Wings and just like never connected those dots in my brain, I found the similarities uh, kind of hilarious actually. Uh, I guess me and the book authors all shared the same brain cell at some point, or maybe we just kind of used each other's leftovers. Uh, either way, I didn't want to take too long on the base, um, nothing too uh, fancy to draw your eyes away from the model. And speaking of, we'll stick that model onto the base and call it done. And here is my finished rendition of the Red Wings Lieutenant. Um, I gotta say, I'm really, I'm really happy with how it came out. I really liked this project in general. I really like filling in the blanks of this uh, official scheme that they don't really seem to have much of an interest in following up on. While obviously a regular battle brother wouldn't be as ornate, I feel like this guy looks the part of a lieutenant and, uh, you know, mix it up every once in a while. Maybe uh, we'll do a sergeant or like a, a devastator or something sometime, but, uh, you know, just put a little variety in it. I still find it funny in retrospect the uh, many parallels between the Red Wings and my uh, custom chapter, uh, The Angel's Lament. It kind of makes me like the Red Wings more. Um, I think of the Angel's Lament as like the optimistic version of the Angel's Lament, whereas the Angel's Lament went like 100% Doomer and then vanished. The Red Wings are, you know, still kicking around. But yeah, I hope uh, I hope you guys like this little insight into the Red Wings, uh, their the, the little bits of lore that they do have. 
if anybody does end up painting red wings for like an army or like a kill team or something let me know because uh, i'd really like to see like if this video catches anybody's attention they go read and like oh man i love the red wings in that book or you know just something like that or i'll tag me on instagram as well that's an option but yeah i'm making a very concerted effort to not make this intro a million years long um so here's my links on the screen my whole youtube uh outro card thing Holy shit, I just cannot talk today. You guys have no idea how many times I've re-recorded the script. But anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you around.